Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me first thank the organizers for making such a nice meeting and for inviting me. My talk will be on um, efficient immunization approaches to avoid epidemic spreading. Uh, you know, epidemic usually spreads on a, a network, which means that a network of people or a network of computers, as you see in the picture here, and uh, the epidemic can start somewhere and continue and spread. And the question is, what are the best strategies to immunize the network against uh, spreading of epidemics? And uh, I will speak about work that was done with this group of people. Some of them are my students. Some of them are in uh, Boston University. And in particular, Gene Stanley, who is here also from Boston. Uh, so let me start. What is a network? And why networks are important. Network is a simple, is very a simple structure of n nodes. So you have n nodes. The nodes are the circles here, and m edges. Edges are the connection between them. And um, uh, and this is in mathematics. It is called graph. But for us, usually we use a network. And complex systems uh, can be better described and understood in many cases using networks. For example, if you look on the internet, for example, the nodes represent uh, computers. These nodes can represent computers. And the links, the connection cables between them. This is the internet. The internet is a hardware uh, network. Social system, uh, nodes can represent people. For example, these nodes can represent people. And links, their relations. And when the epidemic spreads, it spreads when you meet somebody and you give him the, the disease, the infection. Now, uh, another system, an example, there are many examples. I, I choose only three, which are relevant for uh, epidemics. Cell phone system, this is not yet relevant, but may become relevant, as pointed out in a recent last month's uh, article by Wang and Barabashi in Science 2009. And the nodes represent the cell phones. And the links, their interaction. I mean, if you call someone, the cell phone calls another cell phone, or send messages, SMS, it can be, um, you can uh, deliver a virus, and these viruses can, can infect uh, the system. And uh, what is, uh, I want to discuss is also that percolation is actually the, similar to immunization. What do we do in percolation? In percolation, we take a network and we remove nodes or links, a certain concentration, and we ask for which concentration of removal the network become disintegrated into small pieces, small networks. Because if I remove, for example, this, you can see this node in the center, you can see that I have many pieces. So what concentration I remove? And I can remove in different strategies. I can remove randomly, which is usually the classical percolation, I remove randomly. But instead of removing, I can ask the same question by immunize, immunizing the nodes. If I immunize the nodes, the same nodes that I remove, and the network collapse, it means the network is immunized. Because if I immunize the correct nodes, then a disease cannot spread over the network, can spread only on a small cluster, because the network collapses at a certain a percolation theory actually tells you that if you remove a certain fraction, a critical threshold of uh, nodes or links, the network collapses into small pieces, very small pieces. So it's a phase transition that we speak in physics. So percolation and immunization are the same. You can remove the nodes and, and uh, break the system into small clusters or immunize and then the same nodes that you remove and then you have also small clusters where the disease cannot spread. And the question is, what is the best way to immunize or remove the nodes in order to break the system? Best means minimum number, for example, of links, minimum number of nodes, because immunization costs money and you want to immunize uh, with a, a low cost. Uh, there are also weighted networks when each link has a weight which determines the strength or the cost of the link, but I will not discuss in this talk uh, the weighted networks. Now, I told you, uh, this is uh, related to the paper of uh, Wang and uh, Barabashi and his co-workers co in Science 2000. They show that currently we are in the stage where the number of phones 
that share the same operating system is small, and that's why you don't have a percolation. Actually, if you look at the picture, this one is a, but it's not connected to this one because it's connected to other phones that do not have the same operating system. But once the share of the, the market in the smartphones will go higher, it will go a percolation transition, and then a virus that can start here, you see, can propagate all over the system. So there might be, this is the expectation, this is the prediction of the paper, there will be a, a virus epidemics like in computers. There is no reason why there will be more, more smartphones than computers. And since the, the smartphone can uh, have the similar operating, same operating system, you can send files and files with viruses, and then they expect in two, three years, epidemic in a smartphone system, which will be very, uh, very, um, I mean, very critical because we all use smartphones and small phones. So the question is how to, how to make, how to avoid these epidemics? What are the best way to immunize the system in order to, to avoid epidemics? So let me first give you an introduction about networks. Since the epidemics is on networks, we have to understand networks. What is, what are networks? So there was, uh, in the last 10 years, there was some uh, understanding that um, the classical work of uh, classical uh, model for network, which was studied by Erdos in the 1960s, is a, a network in which you have nodes, and you, you have N nodes and M links, and you randomly connect two nodes by a link. And this gives a Poisson distribution for the degree, for the number of links per node. And, the, and the, this was solved very nicely by Erdos and Rainey in the 1960s. And there are many papers on this till the year about 1999. And uh, what was found also by Erdos Rainey and other Bolobash also is that uh, there is a critical threshold here, uh, which is if you remove uh, QC, 1 minus 1 over K average. K average is the average degree of the node. Then the network collapses into pieces. This is actually, for us, the immunization. If you immunize 1 minus 1 over K, QC is the number that you have to immunize. PC is the number that exists. So if you immunize QC, which is 1 minus 1 over K average, then you, you can rely on the network, and, uh, and, the, and there is no, I mean, the uh, epidemics cannot occur on such a network. And they found also that uh, the distance between nodes on such a network, which is this distribution, which is the classical, as I said, is of order of log n. It means if you have n nodes, then you can reach, for example, the internet, if you have n, n uh, 10 to the 6 uh, computers. So you take log of n, 10 to the 6 is 6. So by six steps, you can send an email from one person to another, anywhere in the internet, and it reach its, its, its the same. This is also called the six degrees of separation. This was the classical theory, and the, and the nodes, we call the network homogeneous in the sense because every node has almost the same number of links because of the Poisson distribution. However, in 1999, it was initiated by Barabashi and others, and uh, three computer scientists, Falutos, 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 and they found that actually uh, the internet and the other many, many other networks do not obey this type of distribution. So why is it important? Because the formulas, all the formulas that were for PC, didn't, does not work for such networks. And, uh, and the reason now we understand, because these networks are not homogeneous in the sense that not all nodes behave the same. They don't see the same neighborhood. Some nodes have few links, like this one, or like this one has only one link, but some nodes have many. This one has five, this one has 10, this one has eight maybe. So, and, and they found that for many networks, the, there is a power law distribution for the degree distribution, which, is, which allows to have large K because power law falls very slow compared to Poisson, which falls very dramatically. So large K is, is unprobably in this type, but in this type, you can have also large degree like this one. And this is not only uh, um, uh, quantitatively different, but it's qualitatively different. It's a new class of network. It changed the universality class, and you find many anomalous behavior. For example, 
PC is not anymore one over K average, or QC is not one minus one over K average, but PC is zero for such networks. It means QC is one, it means, and for us it's very bad. If you want to immunize a population that behaves like this, you need to immunize almost all people in order to immunize the system randomly. If you immunize, you choose people randomly, you cannot immunize them. If people have a broad degree of distribution, as I will show you later, PC is zero, it means QC is one. So in, to immunize the system, you need. And this you can already see here, because most of the nodes have a small degrees, you see? So if I immunize these nodes, I don't care. It, the, it, the network does not break. On the other hand, because the network is controlled by the high degree, you see, this connect, but to immunize them is very, low probability randomly to choose them because they are very little. Those high degree, they are very little, very few, and randomly you cannot reach them. And that's why PC is zero, QC is one. Another property which was found and very useful for this network, the distance is not log log n, it's even smaller. It's, log, it's not log n, it's log log n. It's even order of magnitude, it's even smaller, log log n. And this is very important for uh, spreading of epidemics, it spreads much easier to many, much more pop higher population and for searching for many purposes. And uh, this is called ultra small world. And uh, this finding in 1999 led to many, many papers which show that there is a breakthrough in our understanding, many problems in network that could not be understood before. So let me just demonstrate that the differences, I, I'm sure many of you saw this slide, but I think some people that did not see it, maybe can learn something. This is the classical network where you have like roads, every city has few roads, Outside, this is a Poisson distribution. However, when you go to the airline network, and uh, it's a Paolo, and this was found by uh, Barabashi, by Vespignani, who is here. He will give you a talk about this. It means there are many hubs, uh, few hubs that have very long connection. Most of the nodes have, have low degree. Small cities, they have only one, two flights, two connections, but some cities, very few, you see, have different. So this is relevant, and let me show you the difference is, is very important, both in mathematics and in physics. In physics, usually, we study lattices like this, which is similar to the Erdos-Reini. Every node has almost the same number of links, neighbors. Here, this, exactly the same. In Erdos-Reini, it's almost the same. Almost the same is in the same class as the same. So these are like, Erdos-Reini is like this one. However, complex networks are much more complex. They are very rich in structure. You see here, this is the WWW, power law distribution found by Barabashi. And, and, and this brings to new statistical physics. It's even so complicated, these structures, that while this one is very easy to define, the, you, you define, you characterize them by, by uh, every node as six, six neighbors and it's embedded in a lattice. So if you tell somebody what is the network, you can draw it immediately. However, this, we don't have yet a fully character, we don't have fully characterization of the network. So we don't have even, we don't know what quantities characterize the network. It's so rich and so, so, uh, and, and, uh, and we need even to characterize this. But it's a uh, big challenges. And for example, the internet, you see the Paolo here. This was found by Falutos, Falutos, Falutos in 1999. And this is the Paolo degree distribution, which means many nodes of low degree and few nodes of high degree. And the same uh, for uh, airline network as was shown by uh, Colizza and Vespignani in 2006. It's a nice power law also. So it's a very broad distribution. Actually for me, I mean for the purpose of my talk, what is important is not exactly the function of the of the degree distribution, but more that it's broad. It's very broad. It means that you can have very different uh, type of nodes, nodes that have low degree and nodes that have high degree. So what is different? Why it's, it's very important for epidemics and for immunization? As I told you before, and this is taken from the book of Robert May, who studied very much uh, immunization threshold, how many you need to immunize in a city in order to stop malaria? So you can see 99%, if you randomly you choose the population of a city and you want to, to, immunize, to avoid uh, malaria, you need 99%. This comes from the fact, that's what we understand now, because usually when you immunize 
uh, people, you know, it's the low degree. There are many. You, to reach the high degree, which controls the network, is very, very difficult. They are very few, so randomly you cannot choose them. Measles also, 90 to 95. You see, all these diseases need a lot of immunizations. The internet, in order to immunize, you need more than 99%. And this was a surprise because the formula that we had at that time was the Erdos-Rini formula. We knew the degree, the average degree of, of person. This was known. And we knew the average degree of the internet was known, but it did not fit this QC. So it was, but now we know that this is correct only for the Shreini, only for Poisson distribution, but if it's a broad distribution, we need another formula. So it's solved because the broad degree distribution does not occur in random graph. We don't have in random graph broad degree, so this formula is for random graph, and I will show you immediately. So what do we need to do? We, we need to generalize PC or QC, the number that you have to immunize, the number that you have to remove in order to break the network, which is the same immunization or, or removal, you need to, to generalize the formula. And this is, can be done for any degree distribution. It was found that PC is not 1 over K average, as shown for, uh, for, uh, for Poisson, 1 over K average, but it's 1 over K0 minus 1, where K0 is cap K squared average over K. It's not only the first moment that matters, that matters as in erdos -Reini. Only the first, uh, in erdos -Reini, in the Poisson, only the first moment, you know the first moment, the average, and you plug it in and you get what is PC and you get what is QC. How many you need to immunize, to remove, in order to break the network. You need also the second moment. And this is general for any random network. I mean, you know the distribution, you, you can calculate K squared, you can calculate K, and then you get, you get K0, and then you know what is QC, is one minus one over K0 minus one. Indeed, this is general, general we can see, because when we take Poisson distribution, for Poisson distribution, K squared is no, you can calculate, is K average squared plus K, divided by K average. And this gives you a K, K squared plus K of plus one. And if you plug it here, you see immediately that PC becomes one over K average. So this is the general formula, generalizing erdos general for any distribution. And when you uh, make the Poisson distribution, you get back PC as, as found by erdos one over K average. And this also can explain why in scale three, uh, QC is one or PC is zero. And the reason is simple, because lambda, k to the minus lambda, this is the power law, and lambda usually is between two and three, or below three. And when lambda is below three, you can see the second moment diverges, because you have k squared times k to the minus lambda. You integrate over all k, you get divergence. So it means that k, cap k zero, k zero, which is the ratio, becomes infinite. And if the ratio becomes infinite, you plug it in here, and you see immediately the PC is zero, which means that QC is one. So this explains why in scale three, but it's not only scale three, it's many broad distributions. It doesn't have to be, if, uh, if K squared is important, then you have to plug it in in order to get the correct PC and not, uh, and not the PC which was found by Erdos Schreiner. So, uh, but, so this is a little frustrating because we see that PC is zero, QC is one. So it means that we need to immunize everyone in order to get, to get the network immunized. So uh, such immunization thresholds are very expensive and sometimes impossible due to lack of immunization doses. So you need to do a lot. So now I want to show you that percolation theory can help us to make efficient strategies. And one efficient strategy you can immediately see is simply instead of removing, if, instead of immunizing randomly the network, if you immunize random, you always, you will choose always the nodes which are low degree, most of them, because you see usually 99% or more are the low degree, so you choose them. But you see here, the high degree, if you remove them or immunize them, the network breaks. You immunize the high degree, then the network. So this is one of the suggestions to how to immunize good the network, take the highest degree, highest degree, the second highest degree, the third, and already three nodes, the network immunized. If the disease starts here, it cannot propagate through the immunized uh, nodes, and then 
it cannot, so whenever it starts, it cannot continue to propagate. So high degree node, which we call targeted high degree, is one of the best, one of the good methods to immunize. So I want to show you some efficient immunization strategies. One is high degree targeted. And let me show you compare targeted to, to on scale free, targeted to random. Random, as I told you, you need to immunize 100%. And this is done for a system of 10 to the 6. I think it's finite system. That's why you need a, a finite value. But if it's infinite system, it will go, this line will go up to here and then go down. Up to 3, you need to immunize 100% of the nodes if it's an infinite system. The bigger the system is, QC becomes bigger and bigger, and you need more and more. This is for random. However, targeted, look, it's much better. It's a factor of 10 better or more, 20 better. If you target it, you remove the high degree node, you immunize the high degree node, you need only 6%. It's very vulnerable. You, you can destroy the network by removing the high degree nodes. And this depends on lambda also, but you see the difference is about factor of 20. But in order to know the high degree node, in order to immunize the high degree, you need to know them, and not always you know them. So how can you make strategies in which you, you even if you don't know, you can still improve the, the, the immunization. So the method that we showed in this paper was called acquaintance immunization. What does it mean acquaintance immunization? You, you take randomly people, but you don't immunize them, you immunize their friends. Tell me one of your friends, that's all. And then when you immunize their friends, then it drops from 100% it drops to 20%, already much better. But this is the case where you don't know the high degree. If you don't know the high degree, you just, you don't know the network, you don't know the, you just take acquaintance immunization and it drops by a factor of five here. Now, if you want to improve it, you immunize only uh, people that were pointed by two friends. I mean, if two friends point to this, then you immunize them, then it drops farther and farther. You can improve it, but you cannot reach the targeted, which is very good. Uh, immunization. So this is order two, means two. This you can show uh, analytically and you can prove it, uh, you can see it also here. If I, if I choose this one and I tell him, show me my friend, usually this is his friend only. So he will give you his friend and then you immunize them. But this is typical in scale-free networks. But this is not only, um, so these are the efficient immunization and these are the random so run, But this could not be done in the old networks. In erdos Reni, there is no efficient immunization. All the nodes are almost the same. So there is no meaning almost for a, a very efficient immunization. Let me show you, for example, here. This is uh, when you apply the, the SIR model, and the, this is the recovery infection rate. The recovery time is one. Then you see also that QC for random is very high. This is for a system of 10 to the 6 nodes, very high, for lambda 2.5. And when you take the acquaintance immunization, you see it becomes much significantly much lower, a factor of uh, almost uh, 7 lower here. Here it's a factor of, uh, can be 100 lower. And the same for 3.5. Look, 3.5 is, uh, so, uh, is not so broad, it's less broad than 2.5 lambda. Lambda means here, this, the, the case faster, but still you see the improvement of acquaintance immunization is very, very high. So, but acquaintance immunization is not only eff e e e effective for scale free, but I can show you other broad distribution. For example, if you have two Gaussians distribution, one degree is three plus minus variance two or, or eight, and the other is 3 plus D, and D is a parameter. It means that D can be zero, then they coincide. You have only one degree plus minus. But D can be changing. And then you can see what happens here, what is QC. And you can see here that uh, if you take uh, the case of, um, of, of this one, you see, this one is the case where the variance is two, the, bla the full curve, and you can see QC is a... Uh, is very high, you need to remove, you see even Gaussian, two Gaussian. This is, you need to, to, to uh, remove or to immunize very high, but while if you go here, if you go to the acquaintance immunization, the QC, the number that you have to immunize becomes very low. You see, this is not anymore uh, uh, power low. 
This is just two Poisson, two uh, uh, Gaussian. Even if D is zero, which means that you have only one, Poiss one uh, Gaussian, you can see there is a big difference. D is zero, you see also a big difference uh, in, improve. So even in, it works, the acquaintance simulation, even if, if, you, if you have a, a Poisson distribution or Gaussian distribution, and this is the, the mathematical framework for, for calculating QC for any degree distribution. So now the question is, is this the best? And this was believed to be the best to take the high degree and, uh, and, uh, and uh, remove them, and then you break the network into pieces or immunize them, and then the network Im is immunized. As I showed you before, look here, you can see here. Targeted is much better than equated. Equated immunization is, is less good, but you, don't, you need less information. You don't need to know the structure of the network. Just everyone tell me my, one friend of mine. But for targeting, if you know, it's very good. And this was believed to be the best. And what I want to show you now, that uh, there are better methods, even from targeted. Targeted means the high degree, then immunize, remove the high degree node. And this we call equal graph partitioning. And, uh, and what we do in equal graph partitioning is, the, uh, first of all, we ask what is the best method. The best means removing number or immunizing minimum, minimal number of links or nodes. And as I told you, in random immunization, one needs to immunize almost all nodes. If you take randomly, you cannot immunize the system only if you immunize almost all nodes in the system. In targeted, a small fraction of high nodes, a degree nodes are needed. And the question is, is this optimal as believed? And some people believed, or many people, that this was, I believed also it's optimal. What we do in graph partitioning, in called graph partitioning, what we do is a different strategy. Instead of immunizing or removing the high degree nodes, the red ones here, we, we break the network into equal clusters, equal clusters. And this is based on a method that was uh, developed graph partitioning by uh, Kernigam and Lin already in 1970. They asked the question, I have a network and I want to know to div divide it into two equal pieces. What is the minimum number of links that I need to remove, I, I want to find the place where I take minimum number and the network is split it into two pieces. So we generalize it to not to two, to three, to four, and not only to links, also to nodes. And when we use this, we got surprising results. These are the two papers that describe this method. We got surprising results that this is uh, significantly better than immunizing the high degree nodes. Uh, so, and let me show you an example, demonstrate it. This is a very simple demonstration. I take a scale-free network, lambda 2.5, really scale-free, only 50 nodes to demonstrate. And then this is the network, the original network. These are the same. And now I use here three strategies. I use, I want to immunize only seven nodes. Seven nodes, but with different strategies. So the first strategy is random. I choose these seven randomly. You see, the red one I choose and remove them. And I look what happened to the network. And I see that almost all the nodes are still connected here. You can see only one is disconnected. It means that if a disease will, if I will immunize these red nodes and the disease will continue to spread to infect, it will not have. Now if I take uh, the high degree nodes, I want to see what happens. I choose the highest degree. This one red, this one high degree, this one, this one, this one. Only the high degree nodes, seven nodes. The same number of nodes here and here. And then I see still 46 are connected. It means that, that most of the nodes are still connected. If I immunize, if I, immu if I, uh, uh, the infection starts here, it will affect big fraction. Now I do the other strategy. I take seven nodes and I ask myself, I want to try to divide in seven nodes the, the network into equal pieces. Of course, a small network, I cannot do exactly equal, but I can do as, as best as possible. This method is not uh, uh, exact, but the method is close to exact. That's what I call it. So I have to choose these nodes, and I, I want to see what happens. So I immunize them, I remove them, and then I see that I get almost equal clusters. You see, one is 14, one is 13, and one is 12, and the other two small clusters. But you see, the largest cluster that can be infected, in this case, is only 14, which is almost... Uh, uh, four times, le uh, three times less, 3.5 times less than this. So this you can demonstrate, I can demonstrate to you that this is better. But this is not enough. I need to do a lot of statistics. And what we did, we compared 
the equal graph partitioning uh, with different methods. And what we measure is the largest cluster that uh, is available after four type of methods. One is the high degree. This is the black one here. And, uh, and one is high betweenness. This is the green one. High betweenness is also a certain uh, good method to, to, to immunize. And the other one is, uh, this one is, uh, the red is high degree adaptive. High degree adaptive means that I remove the high degree node first. And then after I removed it, I, I, I look the second, the, the largest one again. Because it, if I, if I uh, look in the beginning, the second one may not be the same after removal one node. So it's more efficient. And you can see it here. This high degree adaptive is better than high degree. This is the red. But still, if I look on the, on the equal graph partitioning, it's much better. You can see if you remove 20% of the, of the nodes in this method, in the equal graph partitioning, you see you get the largest is 20%, while here it's about 50%. So it's much better. And this is done for random graph even, for workplaces, for scale free, and for the internet. These are two real network and, uh, and two uh, model network. So we believe that this is a very uh, efficient method to immunize when you know the structure of the network. Of course, you have to know. And uh, for example, if you have a company, a big company, that you know who meets, which people meet with other people. So you know the interaction. You go to the other room, they meet. And then you can put the strategy and ask only a small number of people, smallest number of people to be immunized. And then, of course, uh, you can stop the disease in a very simple way. I don't have much time. I will go very shortly on another way of, um, of uh, percolation, which uh, is important also for immunization. And this is called uh, LPP, limited pass percolation. And the, 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 the motivation for this is the following. When you make percolation, when you start to remove nodes, or immunized nodes, the distances become larger and larger when you up to, when you up to, uh, when you reach criticality, it becomes enormously large. I mean, you, because these nodes are shortcuts. They help you to make a shortcut. So the question is now, in many cases, like in combination, long pass are not effective. You don't want long pass. So in, in principle, if it's a long pass, it's essentially not connected. But in percolation, it's still connected. With regard. And infection diseases flu decays over time. So if it takes time to, to, to infect, and uh, maybe after one week, then the flu is decays already. So you don't care if it will be infected after two weeks. And you want to know what is the number that you have to immunize, and until you get long paths, which are already not effective, not important, and also mutation of pathogen. So what we do is a percolation in which the pass is limited uh, by a factor A times the old pass. So we remove, but when we, and we only consider connectivity when the nodes I and J are connected smaller than A times. Let's say A can be 1.2, 20% more than the old. So you start with the network and you know the old pass. And now you, you ask what is the, uh, the percolation when you assume that the old pass is, uh, is, uh, is, is smaller than A times L I J. So let me just uh, show you first that the distances become very large when you remove. This is the distance as a real network. And you can see that uh, the number of infection becomes, if you assume that, uh, that you can 20% or 50% more and, or 100% more, then it moves you, your PC much louder. And one can get a formula for PC, which is generalizing of uh, erdos -Rini. It means A is the parameter here, how much you allow the length of the pass. And this is the new PC which is uh, larger, it means that QC becomes smaller, you need to immunize less, and this is, it appears A here, when A is infinite, when you don't care about the pass, this is the regular percolation, you get back one over cap, one over K. And this is, I think, I will finish with this, and let me just go to the summary and conclusions. Take home messages, first of all, real networks have complex topology, richer than studied earlier, Lattices and Erdos graph, these are classical and very simple topology compared to the real network. And that's why you get new laws, new scaling laws. Statistical physics tools enable to us to we can uh, develop new efficient percolation immunization. 
as I told you, they are the same approaches, like EGP equal graph partitioning and LPP equal graph partitioning, I told you, leads to a optimal way to immunization or disintegration in the network, smallest QC, if you make the equal graph partitioning, and this makes sense also because in high degree, you get also small cluster, but you don't care the small cluster. You care that, that uh, the largest cluster will not be above a certain value. So you don't care if they are the same. So if they are the same, it's always optimal. And limited pass percolation, which takes into account length restriction of useful pass, it, it's important for uh, epidemics and data transfer, and uh, it implies a new formula. So I think one can learn that one can do a form percolation theory, useful and efficient immunization strategies. Thank you very much.